Well, now we want to talk about something called implicit differentiation. All the differentiation, differentiation we've been doing so far has been explicit differentiation. So the way I'm going to introduce this section is might seem a little strange, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two functions, 3x plus 2y equal 4 and xy equal 5, and I'm going to um, find the derivatives of these two functions both explicitly and implicitly so that you can see the difference. Okay, so to actually solve the first one, 3x plus 2y equal 4, if I use explicit differentiation, the first thing I would do is I would actually solve this. I would solve it for y in terms of x. That's a 2y. 2y equals minus 3x plus 4. So then um, I would divide to solve for y. I would actually divide by 2. So y would equal negative 3 halves x plus 2. And we know how to differentiate this. This is, this is pretty easy now. So if we want to take the derivative of minus 3 halves x plus 2, we know y prime, or if you want to call it dy over dx, is just the derivative of the x term, which would be negative 3 halves, because the derivative of the constant would be 0. So this derivative would be negative 3 halves. But let's suppose for a moment, just for a moment, just do this for me. Suppose that 3x plus 2y equal 4 is a function that is too complicated for us to actually isolate y like we did up here. Just pretend that, that this function is too difficult to isolate y. Well, what we could do then, there is a way to, Im to differentiate this, but it's called implicit differentiation. What you do is you take the derivative of each term. And when I say that, what you're doing is you're applying this derivative operator d over dx to each term. So let me show you. So if we have 3x, if we apply the, the operator d over dx to 3x, that just means take the derivative of 3x with respect to x, which is, of course, 3. If I apply it to 2y, well, I know the derivative of 2y is going to be 2 times whatever the derivative of y is. Now, here's the problem. Since I don't know what the function y is, then I don't know what the derivative of y is with respect to x. Remember, from this, I don't know what y actually equals. So I can't actually calculate the derivative of y as a function of x. I have to just show it. So I'm just going to show that the derivative of 2y is equal to 2 times the derivative of y with respect to x. And then, of course, the derivative of 4 is going to be 0 with respect to x. So I get that. Well, the dy over dx is actually what I'm trying to solve for. So what I can do is now I can take this equation and I can solve it for dy over dx. So take this equation here and now solve it for dy over dx. Now all I have to do, it's pretty simple to do, just move the 3 to the other side of the equal sign and I get 2 dy dx equals negative 3, and then divide both sides by 2, and I get dy over dx equals negative 3 halves. And note that this is the same derivative that I got up here when I did it explicitly. So explicitly and implicitly yields the same answer. Now I do want to warn you, we're going to see some examples later where it's more difficult for me to show you that the two methods are the same. Uh, this next one kind of gets to that, but it doesn't quite get where we're actually going to head to. Let's say I wanted to solve or, or differentiate this function with respect to x. Let's say I wanted to differentiate the function xy equal 5 with respect to x. Well, to explicitly differentiate this, what you want to do is you want to solve this for y, because you need it solved for y. So if I solve that for y, I get y equals 5 over x. But in order to differentiate that, I need to write that as 5 times x to the negative 1. Now, if I take the derivative of this explicitly, in other words, the way we've been doing it, 
then that would be 5 times negative 1 x to the negative 2, which would be minus 5 x to the negative 2, or minus 5 over x squared. So the derivative explicitly for y with respect to x is minus 5 over x squared. Now let's try this implicitly. To do this implicitly, I'm going to have to apply this d over dx to the two terms. I've got xy on the left, and I've got 5 on the right. So I've got to apply the d over dx to xy. But here's the thing we have to remember. This is a product. So remember, to take the derivative of a product, you have to apply the product rule. So let's think about how I would do that. I would take the first factor, which is x, and then I would multiply it by the derivative of the second factor, which is y. So I would have times the derivative of y with respect to x. Now remember, I don't know what y is, so I just have to show derivative of y with respect to x. Then I take the second factor, which is y, and I multiply that by the derivative of x with respect to x. Now I know that's 1, so you can just you know cancel that. And so what we've got here is just x times the derivative of y with respect to x plus y equals 0, which is this right here. Okay, now in order to get my answer uh, to what the derivative is, I need to solve for dy over dx from this equation. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to um, move the y to the other side. And so now I get x times dy over dx is negative y. And then to solve for dy over dx, just divide by x. So I get dy over dx is minus y over x. So this is my derivative minus y over x. Now, you might, if you compare these two, up here we got the derivative was minus 5 over x squared. And down here we got the derivative of minus y over x. And so you might be looking at those and you say, well, they're not the same. Well, when you implicitly differentiate, many times your answer is going to be in terms of both y and x rather than just x. Because the reason you implicitly differentiate is because you started with a function where you cannot isolate y. And if you cannot isolate y uh, in terms of x, then many times you're not going to be able to isolate the derivative of y in terms of just x. Now in this case we can kind of cheat because, because actually if here I said the derivative is minus y over x, but if you think about that, don't we know what y is? Didn't we know up here, since we could cheat, that um, y is actually 5 over x? So if I do that, let's say I put uh, on top, let's put 5 over x. So I have 5 over x all over x. Well, if you take 5 over x and divide it by x, you're actually going to get minus 5 over x squared. So... So we actually do get the same thing there. Now, but again, remember what I'm saying. On most problems, on the problems that we're going to do this to, we're not going to have functions like xy equal 5 or 3x um, plus 2y equal 4 where I can easily solve for y. It's going to be functions where it's maybe difficult or even impossible to solve for y in terms of x. So here are the guidelines for uh, implicit differentiation. You differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x, and then you write the result so that all terms involving dy over dx are on the left and the other terms are on the right, and then you factor dy over dx from the terms on the left and then solve for dy over dx. So let's look at an example. Okay, so here we have x squared y minus 5x plus y equals 3. So I'm going to apply d over dx to each of these. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of x squared y of minus 5x of y and of 3. So, now here's the catch. Here, I have to use the product rule. So for the product rule, I'd say x squared times the derivative of y with respect to x. And then for the other half of the product rule, I'd take the second function, y, and then multiply it by the derivative of x squared with respect to x. 
Now, to get the derivative of the second term, that's easy. Since this, since this is 5x, the derivative of 5x with respect to x is just 5. So that's just going to be minus 5. The derivative of y with respect to x, well, I don't know what y is, right? So I have to just show it, the derivative of y with respect to x. And the derivative of a constant is always 0. Now, notice here I have x squared times dy over dx. Let's finish this up. The derivative of x squared is 2x, so this would be 2xy. Brought down the minus 5, brought down the dy over dx, brought down the equal 0. Now, notice that this term and this term have a dy over dx. So I'm going to keep those on the left. See, so I kept those on the left of the equal sign. And then this term, this plus 2xy and this minus 5, don't have the dy over dx, so I'm going to move those to the other side, and of course they change sign. Well then finally, these two terms, I can factor out the dy over dx. So if I factor dy over dx out of the first term, I get x squared. If I factor dy over dx out of this term, I just get 1. So I get dy over dx times x squared plus 1. And then finally, I can isolate the dy over dx by dividing x squared plus 1 into both sides. So if I divide both sides by x squared plus 1, on the left it eliminates the x squared plus 1, and on the right I have 5 minus 2xy over x squared plus 1. And that's how we implicitly differentiate a function. Now notice that the derivative here is written in terms of both x and y. And we're going to assume that we can't actually figure out what the y is in terms of x. So we just have to leave it like this. Now, in the other examples, instead of using dy over dx, I'm going to use uh, y prime. So it's a little bit quicker notation to use. So let's take a look at this problem. Um, x, xy minus y cubed equals 1. So let's say I wanted to take the derivative of this, find the derivative of this with respect to x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of each term with respect to x. So I apply the d over dx to each term. So I apply it to the three terms. Now, the derivative of xy is going to require the product rule. So I have x times the derivative of y with respect to x, which I'm just going to call y prime. And then I'll have y times the derivative of x with respect to x. But we know the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. So that's just going to give me y times 1. Now, the derivative of y cubed, this is where it can get a little tricky. Remember, y is some function of x. I don't know what it is. It might be square root of x. It might be x squared plus 1. You know, I don't know. I just know it's a function of x. So I've got to apply the general power rule here. So when I take the derivative of y cubed, I have 3y squared, and then I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So I have to multiply by y prime. And so that's something you have to remember. And now the derivative of constant is always 0. So now I have these two terms that both have y prime in them. So I put them together on the same side of the equal sign. And the only term that didn't have the y prime was the y, so I moved it to the other side. And now I factor the y prime out of these two terms, and I get y prime times x minus 3y squared equals minus y. And then just divide both sides by x minus 3y squared to get y prime and y prime would be minus y over x minus 3y squared. Or if you wanted to, you could multiply the top and bottom by negative and actually write it like this, y over 3y squared minus x. Um, go ahead and freeze the video and take a look at this one and try to work this one on your own and see if you can get the same answer I did, and then you can uh, move on to the next video. On the next video, I'm going to do some more implicit differentiation problems, but I'm going to uh, do a couple of applications with it.